Hello, Nadim here with PC Solutions Net. Today I'm going to go over a little known feature of Outlook Web Access. Outlook Web Access is just a short name for um, getting access to your emails through the web. It's uh, also known as OWA and usually the URL is your domain slash OWA. So for example, for me, it's my domain is https colon slash slash mail dot pcsn dot net slash OWA. Now normally if you go into OWA, which I'm going to go over here, you will get your emails, your um, a contacts, calendar entries, and all those items. Uh, similar to what you see in Outlook. Now, everybody knows how to get to your Outlook Web Access page, your OWA page, which is fine. The hidden part of this is what's called the Exchange Control Panel. So instead of using OWA, you can use your domain name slash ECP, short for Exchange Control Panel. Now, once I go to ECP, you will notice some interesting things. Uh, first of all, you will see that you can control uh, a lot a lot of the different aspects that uh, things that you have in Outlook that you normally don't see in Outlook Web Access. For example, uh, you see your account settings. Uh, this is your account information. Uh, you can get your settings for POP or IMAP uh, here. You can connect Outlook to this account. If your Exchange server is configured properly, uh, this will automatically configure Outlook for you. You can also change your password. Uh, you can also do some other things here, uh, like uh, setting up your vacation messages. But that's not as interesting. What, what I want to talk about specifically today is how you can use the Exchange Control Panel to maintain your handheld devices. Um, uh, that's the second last in the list. So let's just go through the other options real quick. So we went over my account. You can also organize emails, basically set up rules, automatic replies, and delivery reports. You can configure all that for your Outlook Web Access. So these are things that you don't see in your regular Outlook Web Access uh, page. Uh, you can also look at groups and even request uh, that you be added to certain other groups. So when you go into groups, it will query the server, get a listing of groups that you belong to, and you can join other groups as well if, if needed. So uh, the other thing you can look at is settings. Uh, you shouldn't have to change anything in settings unless you want to customize something. Uh, basically customize how your messages are shown, uh, customize what your calendar looks like, customize your signature, things like that. Um, also you can uh, personalize your regional settings, uh, your time zones and language and those kind of things. But the best part is, going, is the phone which I'm going to go into last. Uh, so uh, in the block and allow is basically your junk email settings. If you are using Exchange Online, then uh, these settings uh, are really a, a good place where you can control your uh, spam filtering uh, quality so you can make it tighter or looser how you, how you want to do it. Uh, best option in an Exchange Control Panel is uh, that you can maintain your handhelds. Uh, basically, uh, any device that connects with Microsoft ActiveSync uh, can be controlled from here. Uh, as you can see, it's some very powerful features here. First of all, you can see your last sync time. So I have an iPhone and it, it will not show the number. Now, if it was a Windows mobile phone, it will show the number, but uh, it will work with any device that connects with uh, ActiveSync. So you will see your iPhones if you have it synced up to Exchange. You will see your Android-based phones. You will see your iPad, you will see your Windows mobile based phones. What you will not see here are BlackBerry devices because BlackBerry does not use Exchange ActiveSync. Um, 
so the status is okay over here you can start logging so uh, uh, I normally will not say you start logging just to log all the uh, syncs going on with your phone because that's just going to generate more traffic um, the reason the logging option is there is it helps in troubleshooting issues so you should probably only do logging if you're trying to troubleshoot something um, and if you have an iPad and an iPhone then you will see both devices listed over here and you will see the status for both of them now if you have multiple devices you'll be able to select a device and let's say if you lost your iPhone somewhere you can select it and then simply click on wipe device so this will wipe the device remotely so it's a it's a very good uh, security feature if you do lose your phone or you do lose your iPad you can remotely wipe it from here uh, you can also go into details and get the details of your phone for example the device ID this is a unique device ID that is tied to that handheld device so if uh, you need to find out the device ID for maybe law enforcement purposes or whatever you can find out from here even if you don't have the phone in your hand uh, so this is a very helpful and little known feature in exchange that uh, you can use there's also uh, text messaging options which is uh, you can enable SMS messages to be sent to your phone uh, so every time you get an email it can send you a text message which is really uh, I don't think is needed uh, because ActiveSync, uh, ActiveSync itself has very good push technology, so you should you shouldn't need to enable text message. But if the if there is a need that you have to do that, then that's uh, certainly an option. So that's it for today, and uh, the URL again is going to be your domain name slash ECP for Exchange Control Panel. So if a, if you lose a device, go into your Exchange Control Panel and simply wipe the device from here. And there you have it. Have a good day.